In our previous video, we looked at the static file storage option of the manifest static file storage so that we could get an MD5 hash of our static files to be in our URL so we could do better cache busting and hosting on CDNs. In the video before that, we did a revised video on Heroku and used the package called white noise to be able to generate our static files for us on Heroku and also get that cache bustable static file as well. In this video, we're going to go over actually using white noise in your project outside of Heroku and kind of give us an extra layer on top of the manifest static file storage option. Actually at its base white noise uses the manifest static file storage except it adds a couple of extra niceties. One of those niceties is it does gzip for you or it uses the new Brotly compression to be able to compress your files down. Using white noise is actually quite simple to get started with so let's just go ahead and jump in and do it. First thing we'll do is we're going to install Install it with pip install white noise. Now let's look at our templates index.html. We want to load static from static files or in Django 110 and up you're going to do load static. Then we're actually using our static template tag here and doing our CSS and our JavaScript so that it knows that it needs to do the calculation and stuff to figure out the right file to use. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our settings file, set our static files location for our production static files. In this case it's our static root setting and we're setting hey the base of this project there's going to be a static files directory with all of our compressed and finalized files in it. And we're going to get that by calling our collect static. The next setting we're setting is the static file storage. In our previous video, we used manifest static file storage for this. But in this case, we're going to use the white noise.storage compressed manifest static file storage. This adds the compression on top of the static file storage so we get a little more performance out of our static files. Next, we want to set a middleware for our project so that our project actually understands a little more about what to go get and what to do with our static files. So we're going to go to our middleware classes section and we're going to scroll all the way up and just below the security middleware we're going to add our white noise dot middleware dot white noise middleware. This is so for incoming and outgoing requests it can package up our static file for us if it needs to. Now we're actually done with our configuration and we are production ready to use white noise and this is great except sometimes white noise can do things a little bit differently than Django does and so you can lead to some interesting results when doing development locally. This can easily be resolved by importing an app into our installed apps of white noise run server no static and we want to actually put that above our static files installed app so that it just kind of overrides that. This is the actual run server command and it modifies it so that it doesn't do some of the static file stuff that the static files app does and so it uses white noise by default in our project when doing development. So with all that said and done we're actually ready to start using it. So if we'll actually go ahead and look at our folder, note we don't have static files generated. And now when we do our run server and go look in the browser, we refresh the page, we get our hello world from our JavaScript, and we get our CSS and our content, and it all looks good. If we look at our page source, you can see it does not use a hashed file. It uses just regular static CSS main.css. Now we want to actually go use our new hashed URLs locally and to test it out. So if we'll open up our settings file, and we go change our debug to be false, then it's going to be use our production settings. Now that we actually want to run this in production, we need to do a collect static. The reason we need to do that in this case, and we didn't have to on Heroku, is because Heroku runs it automatically for us in our particular case we're using white noise. So now that we have that run, let's go ahead and view everything in the browser. Now we have our hello world, we have our actual CSS loaded, and when we look at our source, we have our hashed file working just fine. That's it. That's all that's really needed to be able to use white noise in your project and in any project you want to do, and it kind of makes managing everything a little bit easier. There's also a few more more advanced settings that you can do for doing your CDN hosting. You just set a URL at the beginning of your static URL and it'll take care of the rest for you. So with that, I suggest you at least play with it a little bit and have a good day.